Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and once again I'm doing another movie review um, just to celebrate Christmas. It's the 1994 film The Santa Claus, already celebrating its 20th anniversary about an advertising executive who winds up becoming Santa Claus after he puts on the suit. In that sort of way. But this was the film that pretty much started it all long before it became a franchise. It's also the film that became Tim Allen's very first film along with his director John Pasquin who directed all the episodes of Home Improvement, the TV series. Yeah, already being fresh from it at the time when it was very popular on ABC which also stars Jonathan Terry Thomas, Zachary Ty Bryan, Tara North Smith, Richard Karn, uh, as well as Earl Hydeman, who played Wilson, the neighbor who, who often doesn't show his face except his eyes and, and nose, as well as his hat. Yeah, he's no longer with us, sadly. Patricia Richardson, Deborah Dunning, um, who was a replacement to to Pamela Anderson, yeah, since she was the first two-time girl before her. It was a very good show. Um, they used to film it over there at uh, Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California. And I, I remember, you know, I remember when I was at the freeway at, at Hollywood Way, I wound up seeing the, the stage building and it has the Home Improvement logo on there. Yeah, remember that? Which was right next to the animation studio and all the rest. I remember seeing that. So that's definitely where they filmed the series. Uh, very awesome. It was very popular back then, you know, because uh, Tim Allen was a stand up comedian you know, from Detroit, Michigan. And he basically does a lot of, a lot of jokes, you know, mostly involving, you know, sexism and, and tools and all this other stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you look at one of his stand up comedies from the 80s and 90s you, you pretty much will get the idea that <laughs> he's always into that stuff yeah also automobile this is the movie that pretty much um, got me into loving um, Tim Allen and, as opposed to Home Improvement and I wish I had the entire series on DVD because um, I know they're very expensive to get the entire complete series there was actually a complete box set that has a toolbox like the Binford uh, <laughs> toolbox that they have from the series. It's just awesome. But it was interesting to see uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor, you know, you know, playing Santa Claus in that sort of way. Yeah. <laughs> ho 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 ho. And all those clones and all that. Anyway, I went to see this movie with my family, my mom, dad, my uncle as well as my brother Jason and, and I think I saw what I mean as well, my sister. So <laughs> and of course we all did and and this was at the time when we were about to get some Christmas presents, you know, because Christmas was already around the corner at the time and and we were just um, having a good time watching an awesome movie on <laughs> Christmas. I'm gonna get right to it. The movie stars Tim Allen with Judd Reinhall you know, from the movie Fast Times of Richmond High, as well as Stripes, and vice versa with Fred Savage. And he was very good in this one. Wendy Crewson, as I mentioned before, he was, she was in Mazes and Monsters that I reviewed earlier, along with The Good Son. You know, I didn't care for those films. Um, Eric Lloyd, very good in this film as Charlie. David Crumholtz from the movie Adam's Family Values and Life of Mikey. He also went on to do other TV shows too, including uh, Numbers, which is on CBS. So I know that actor. And he's very good as Bernard. And Peter Boyle, yeah, he's no longer with us sadly, but he's been known for playing different roles. He's also very good. <laughs> as Raymond's fodder and Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah, I always remember th this guy. Yeah. 
He also later went on to do the the last two sequels prior to that um, for the film, and only this time he was playing Father Time. So, yeah. <laughs> and it's directed by John Pasquin, who directed several of, of some of Tim Allen's uh, work. They both collaborate together with films like Jungle to Jungle, Joe Somebody, which is also my favorite, and and the new TV series Last Man Standing. Which I wasn't really uh, a huge fan on the series. I mean, don't get me wrong. The show was okay, but not as good as Home Improvement. So, so here it goes. The movie begins when a 38-year-old advertising executive named Scott Calvin, who's played by Tim Allen, who's now recently being divorced by his wife Laura, who's played by Wendy Crewson, and now being married to a psychiatrist named Neil Miller, who's played by... Judge Reinhold. He's also the father to his very young son named Charlie, who's played by Eric Lloyd. And during that one particular Christmas Eve, Laura and Neil decided to to have Charlie stay over at Scott's place, yeah, for just one night. Yeah. So already, yeah, you know, mostly because Charlie was already having a bad day at school, claiming that. That Santa Claus doesn't exist, and to cheer him up, you know, Scott decided to make a Christmas dinner, you know, just the two of them, and until all of a sudden it became a huge disaster because he accidentally burned the turkey and he started blowing it up by using the fire extinguisher. <laughs> yeah, it was already up in flames. So since that didn't work out, he decided to go to Denny's, you know, to have their Christmas dinner. <laughs> while, you know, having some warm milk and, and coffee. <laughs> and after that, um, when he went back home, Scott decided to read a bedtime story to Charlie called A Visit from St. Nicholas. And when they finally went back to sleep, Scott and Charlie had already awakened by hearing all the, the strangest sounds on the roof. But after confronting the man on the roof, who was already being dressed up, as Santa, and it happens to be Santa Claus, yeah, he accidentally fell off the roof and, and landed on the ground, you know, already, you know, being unconscious and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Scott and Charlie had discovered that, that it might be the real Santa Claus. He has a card in, inside. He actually read and wants to take the suit with him once Santa banishes from thin air already. So they went on top of the roof by climbing up the ladder. They spotted the Santa sleigh along with eight reindeers. And as a result of this, Scott decided to to put on the suit and finish all of Santa's work for him by going in every single house, yeah, including one that didn't have a chimney. <laughs> Yeah, which I had to admit, some of the transition that they put into the film, even with him trying to <laughs> grab the magical bag and, and he went all the way straight down, is, is really something. Yeah. So yeah, he started doing all the work, and and then all of a sudden, you know, as the morning comes, the reindeer had returned to the North Pole, all the way down to Santa's workshop, where the head elf, Bernard, was played by... David Crumshold is trying to explain to Scott that due to the classical contracts written on the card Scott, that Scott already found, that putting it on the suit and entering the sleigh, he has accepted the Santa Claus with the E and has to agree to the responsibilities of that position you know, before reporting to the workshop at Thanksgiving permanently. You know, he has to work for all the million kids and families around the world, you know, to give them presents and all that stuff. But anyway, so he even tells them that you know, he has 11 months to get in his affairs. You know, he has to write down all the list of children, you know, who are who is naughty or nice. You know, a huge list. They wound up staying over at Santa's workshop with the help of a young elf named Judy. They gave Scott a red pajamas to wear, and <laughs> she also gives him uh, hot cocoa, which apparently she took 
12,000 years to make them. <laughs> Who would have fought? <laughs> so that was pretty cute. Yeah, and of course all the elves that they had are, are definitely cute, all right. You know, they, they basically have, you know, long ears and and sparkles on their on the face. You know, they, I just love it. But then, when, as Christmas morning arrives, Scott was already awakening at his own bed, and he actually believes that the night before has already been a dream. But as enthusiastic as Charlie was, he actually keeps uh, remembering the several events that he hadn't told him, and leaves him in doubt, because Charlie basically, you know, tells his entire class that Scott himself is Santa Claus, which all of a sudden made a huge concern by both Laura and Neil that all of this might be, you know, part of the fact that Scott is spending more time with Charlie. So, of course, part of this, you know, he had to ask Scott to put, put a stop to this delusional fantasy. But not wanting to break Charlie's heart, Scott decided to tell him decided to keep all of this a secret. So, of course, after all of that, things started to get even worse when Scott wants to becoming very overweight and, and he started growing some facial hair and, and suddenly his hair decided to turn all white and he's already gaining a ravenous appetite for holiday cookies and milk since he's previously lactose intolerant but <laughs> but then all, all of a sudden you know he started getting a lot of packages from Bernard since they sent him a lot of a lot of gifts to, to the millions of children around the world you know <laughs> already sent by Federal Express so now he's gonna have a hard time dealing with it and, but to make matters worse Laura Neal had a prompt further concern who subsequently called to have Scott visitation rights uh, suspended so on Thanksgiving Scott arrives to visit Charlie but when Laura steps out of the room for a moment Bernard finally comes and takes them away to the North Pole leading her to believe that Scott may have kidnapped him so they have to call the police to stop him. So later, Laura confines that they stopped believing in Santa when she was eight, because at the time, Santa actually failed her to give her a board game called Mystery Date, while Neil, at three years old, stopped believing in Santa when they forgot to give him an Oscar Mayer weenie whistle that he really wanted. It just proves the point that not only that, you know, the whole thing about not believing is is happening. I believe in the scene. Yeah, okay, I'm getting to that point. Believe in the scene. We did discover that Laura and Neil you know, stopped believing them because of what they did, so that's why we couldn't, you know, deal with them so much. But when Scott was already being arrested from the cops while leaving Charlie stranded in the sleigh on top of the roof, the EOFs, which stands for Effective Liberal Flight Squad, that calls in to rescue Charlie and free Scott from jail. Scott finally returns to take Charlie home and manages to convince Laura Neal on his new identity by giving them the gifts they asked for for Christmas. So, Laura finally destroys the court order against him and tells that he can visit Charlie anytime he wants. And a very public departure. Charlie actually tries to use the stove globe that Bernard had gave it to him to summon Scott to, to return. Yeah. But as Scott finally arrives, yeah, Laura finally gave him permission to go on a sleigh ride. Yeah, just for a quick one. And Charlie and Scott finally head out to continue with delivering some more presents. And <laughs> and then the movie ends. So yeah, it was cool. And this is a really fun Christmas movie. And I really enjoyed it a lot. You know, Tim Allen did an awesome job playing Scott Calvin slash Santa Claus. Yeah. Who couldn't forget the scene in the movie where <laughs> he was riding on the sleigh. He even does that, that famous trademark from Home Improvement when he played Tim the Toolman Taylor. He says, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> and, and then at the end he says, Merry Christmas and all... And all the, uh, and all the people in the world. And next year for Christmas, I'm getting a cat scan. <laughs> um, 
you know, where Scott was already on the Sim sleigh you know, with Charlie, and then, you know, during Christmas morning in the city, and he's saying, Merry Christmas to all the to all the children in the world. And next year, I'm getting a and next year on Christmas, I'm getting a cat scan. <laughs> That was hilarious. And I, I bought all the scenes, yeah, even with uh, Bernard the Elf was really something because, you know, he's already trying to explain to, to Scott, you know, that he's Santa, even though he put on the suit and and he had to discover, discover everything that's written in the card. So that means, yeah, this was going to be his big responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And... David Cronwall did an awesome job playing Bernard the Elf. He's he's a real treat here. Yeah, coming from Adam's family values, th this is really something. Uh, I also love the the girl, you know, Judy, the young girl elf, you know, who's helping you know, Scott and, and Charlie you know, inside the room. I thought that was really sweet. Um, definitely a better assistant than <laughs> than the other assistant. It was played by Spencer Breslin in the second Santa Claus movie. Because you know, I thought he was annoying. He was really annoying these days in, in civil films. Yeah, he's also considered to be one of the worst child actor ever. But I'll, I'll give him credit for his film, The Kid, despite it being annoying. Um, but everybody was great in the film, although there are times when I didn't like Laura and Neil that much because you know they started to act up they've, like they've yeah they keep confronting Scott that you know, he's spending way too much time with Charlie and they're trying to make him look bad because of that and also the fact that he's already gaining weight now and his identity is already changing that now he's being treated like crap and, and the fact that he, he can't be able to see Charlie you know every day Kind of sucks, I know. Yeah, nowadays these films like this always have to mix in with all these, with all these uh, divorce and court orders and all that stuff. You know, having him suspended by not being able to visit him. It's, we get this a lot too, and in, in movies like that, and 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 I know it's 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 like real life too because we always have to deal with it. You know, being separated from your family, you have to visit you know, your real life father. You know. I had to deal with that too, you know, since my parents is divorced. So, yeah, but let's let's not get involved in that because all of this becomes a huge problem when he winds up uh, getting arrested by cops, you know, claiming that he kidnapped Charlie and all that. Yeah, there was that one scene where they show all the Sanders trying to find which one is is Scott. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. And by the way, one of the numbers of Santas that they show um, inside the room actually uh, turned out to be one of the directors. Yep, and that turned out to be John Pasquin. Good eye. <laughs> and then uh, all the other scenes, you know, with uh, <laughs> with the elves, uh, yeah, especially the the rest of the squad, you know, trying to stop the cops and and go after Charlie and and Scott to save them and. You know, until they finally went back home, and, you know. and I love all the scenes. You know where he's trying to lose weight. You know he, he's starting to dye his hair, and and then it, it's things started to get even worse. And that, uh, and of course, that other one scene I like was that when he's already at work, already <laughs> eating up all the food, and he winds up uh, looking at the presentation of of Santa on a tank. <laughs> That was just strange, yeah. But nevertheless, uh, th this is a really fun movie, and I really enjoyed it. It's it's definitely one of the best films that I've ever seen, coming from Disney, and it's certainly better than than Disney's other film from the '80s called One Magic Christmas, which is a movie about you know about a mother not believing in Santa Claus. Yeah. This is a much better film. But just like that movie, we get two couples that don't believe in Santa. But even earlier in the film, even Scott didn't believe in him until he finally discovered it. So that's interesting. Even though he thought all of this was a dream. I love Eric Lloyd in this movie too as Charlie. I think 
I think it's a sweet boy. You know, he knows that all this time, you know, you do feel sorry for him after you know, being treated like this at, at school. I believe in Santa and everything. How about telling them that Santa doesn't exist until he finally meets one? That's sweet. And the fact that he finally gave his Scott a gift that he is Santa Claus. And it's definitely uh, very successful when it first came out. You know, I really enjoyed it a lot. I would watch this any time, even on Christmas. Yeah, along with all my favorite Christmas movies, even Home Alone, Home Alone 2, Scrooge, and all the rest. <laughs> it's on my list. And, and yes, this, this movie also spun off um, the last two sequels, uh, The Santa Claus 2 and 3, which is called The Escape Clause. Now, both of these films, um, the second movie had its moments. You know, they knew they wanted to have the Mrs. Claus, so of course they had to choose the teacher who was very mean to to Charlie you know in fact Charlie was getting in, in trouble he's already grown up as a teenager who wants uh, everybody to believe in Santa you know, since he's really over that um, I didn't think it wasn't that great as a sequel I did enjoy it for what it's worth but now that I think about it I, I think it's definitely not as good as the first film and, and it had so many problems with it I thought Spencer Breslin was and yeah, was not that good as uh, the assistant elf. I mean, don't get me wrong. He, he's he's not as good as Judy. And to make matters worse, the, in the third movie, The Escape Clause, we get Martin Short playing Jack Frost in a in a very over the top way, trying to make him into a villain. That that just doesn't work. And it, it seems like you know they were in for a paycheck, and that's why it turned out to be one of the worst sequels ever. <laughs> I'm not surprised. So I, I wouldn't recommend you know, the sequels that much. But I would definitely recommend the first movie because it's way better than any other film I've seen. Yeah, although I wouldn't say it's better than all the other films I've saw, but at least yeah, my favorites. But it's still my top favorite out of all the movies that I made it on the list. And I would watch this any time. No matter what, and hopefully I'll I'll get the film on Blu-ray someday because I do own both the VHS and DVD. Yeah, you know, both in, in full frame, sadly. But I'll get the the whole pack, and I'll I'll get around reviewing the second, third movie you know, sooner or later. But for now, definitely check out the Santa Claus. It's a very funny film from Disney, and. And if you love Tim Allen in Home Improvement, you'll definitely love him in The Santa Claus. It's, it's a treat. So anyway, I give The Santa Claus, with an E at the end, four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.